Hello everyone, today we are going to be looking at Aliens Fireteam Elite released on the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X and Xbox One. So this is the first Aliens game since 2014's Alien Isolation. There's been several other games like the VR one, there's been a pinball one, there's been a mobile one. There's been an arcade one, but as far as like console, like made exclusively for the consoles, this has been the first one in almost over seven or so years. So starting with the PS4 version, look on the cover, it's pretty much what you expect from an Aliens game. You got the big alien mama, I'm guessing, and you got a whole bunch of people shooting at the other smaller aliens. It really gives you foreshadowing on what to expect with this title. Fireteam Elite, you have a whole bunch of dudes shooting aliens, you can expect some co-op action, and for all intents and purposes, this is a co-op game, so PS5 upgrade is available, and rated M for Mature, of course, because, you know, it's aliens, and it's developed by Cold Iron Studios, so if you haven't heard of that developer before, don't feel bad. From what I've looked up, this is actually their first title ever made like is there a really relatively new developer and this is their first title really ever made so we'll see how it goes they got big shoes to fill but we'll see how it goes fight hordes of deadly xenomorphs discover hidden corporate secrets and explore ancient alien ruins across four unique campaigns in the alien universe join an elite fire team as you as your own colonel marine aboard the uas endeavor and Door a dangerous universe and fight for survival together. So, screenshots it says three player co op. Um, survive the hive battle against over 20 unique enemies and you customize your fire team. So, the main emphasis on this is each member of the fire team has a specific role to play. So, it's kind of like team based co op. Pretty interesting to see in the alien title, but. Let's see. Upgrade to the PS5 version at no additional cost. So you pick this up and later down the line you have a PS5. You're worried that you gotta pay for the upgrade. You don't have to, upgrade is free. This is 22 gigabytes. Of course, as it says, you play up to three players and obviously online play is optional. You can play offline, but you don't necessarily need to play online to get the full experience. So violence, blood and gore, and strong language. Like, honestly, just par for the course for an Aliens title. So we're gonna open this up. Personally speaking, I'm not too familiar with the Alien franchise. I know like it's up there as far as like legacy and popularity with the Star Wars series. They're relatively released around the same time, but my history with it is Mortal Kombat 10. Alien and Predator are both in that game. They're both cheap. Speaking of cheap, there's nothing in here. Nothing at all. There's a cool little insert, I guess, of a ship, the Endeavor, and you got the moon and all that. I mean, it's okay. It's better than a white background, that's for sure, but it's still nothing to really clamor about. I mean, I guess it looks cool. Like if you take the disc out, you can see the ship behind the case. I guess it looks pretty cool. But that's the PS4 version. And PS5, same thing as the PS4 version. Same exact thing, Cold Iron Studios. You see the same logo and everything. Same exact thing. This one doesn't have haptic feedback, it says. It just has vibration function supported. And this one is 22 gigabytes as well. Is it the same? Yeah, it's the exact same. So this is 22 gigabytes. PS5 version is also 22 gigabytes. So pretty sure the um, PS5 version is just gonna have like the bells and whistles that you would expect from a PS5 version. It is a free upgrade, but I'm feeling like it's not really that much of a difference compared to the PS4 version, except for the you know, usual bells and whistles, you know, 4K resolution, high res graphics, stuff like that. And even the case and everything is still the same. So, 
Everything is the same. Got the little ship in the background. And that's PS5 version. So if the PS5 version and the PS4 version are the same, I can only assume, and I'd be correct, that the Xbox version is the exact same. So I'm not gonna open up the Xbox version, but I'll show it off, show off what it looks like. So you see Xbox Series X, Xbox One, store delivery. So put it in your Series X, it'll give you the Series X version. Put it in your Xbox One version, it'll give you the Xbox One version. It's all on one disc. Don't need to have more than one disc, but it's also optimized for Series X. So if you play on the Series X, it's the best results. Uh, 4K Ultra HD, and just like the other versions, it's rated M for Mature, Violence, Blood and Gore, and Strong Language. Right, so, open this up again. Alright, so... Here's the Xbox version, and this one doesn't even have the cool um, background like the other ones did. This one is just a plain, simple, warning, privacy, all of that, what you would expect from any other game. So the PlayStation version, I guess if you're looking for aesthetics, is the superior one because it has like the cool little spaceship backdrop. This one doesn't even have, they didn't even bother with the Xbox version. As per usual, we're going to look at the PS5 version of Aliens Fireteam Elite with a future first look. And we'll be right back. We're going to show it off the game and see how it plays. So, um, right off the bat, I like how instead of saying gender, it says archetype. Instead of saying, like, you know, male, female, masculine, and feminine. Okay, I agree. I agree with this. All options, like when you're creating a character, should say masculine or feminine. Mask, femme, that's fine. What? What is an archetype? <laughs> what does that mean? Like, I've never heard that before. Like, I heard, like, you know, gender. Everyone's heard of gender. But what does archetype mean? Like, I guess, I guess, let's go and let it ride. It's archetype. We're calling it archetype. <laughs> For all, all the melty blood players out there, archetype earth that's the that's that's gonna be my new thing what's your gender no it's my archetype my archetype is earth that's crazy archetype it's, a, it's an interesting one anyways um this is alien fire team elite um for the for the sake of the video i am going to be an archetype Femin I'm, a, I'm a feminine archetype <laughs> yo that's actually really cool that's actually really cool i'm gonna use that like, yo, what's your, what's your gender? I'm not a gender. I'm a masculine archetype. That's actually really cool. I'm going to steal that. I'm going to update my Twitter. You're going to see mask, like, day dumb archetype. So what's, what's a day dumb? All right, I'm going way, <laughs> I'm going way, way into this. That's just really intriguing. I'm sorry. Um, so look at the various options here available to us. You go to the 
masculine archetype. Um, <laughs> uh, I looked through all of these options. All of the all of the all of the human characters look like aliens. Uh, I don't know. You see that um character creation is not really the best here. I'm just gonna go through all the hairstyles, everything you could pick. I'm pretty sure like the options are going to be the same for both um feminine and masculine archetypes, but um you know, it's so surreal. So yeah, um, I'm gonna say this throughout the whole video, and the different voices. Charge in the deck. We got incoming. We are ultimate badasses. Bag 'em and tag 'em. Anytime, anywhere. Notch up another kill. Okay, that's Sesco. We're gonna be the um the feminine archetype. What did they go through all the options? See what they all look like. Just to show y'all. As you can see, there's not really that much options to choose from. I mean, it's a sizable amount, but all the skin tones and whatnot. You know, they tried. They tried. They tried making it inclusive. They tried. I'll give them a, an A, an A, an A minus. She look like Shayna Baszler. Yo, I'm gonna go with that one. Feel like Shayna Baszler. Shout outs to everyone that watch wrestling. She really do like Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler, Baszler, whatever. I don't know. Someone's gonna correct me. I guess her name is actually Shayna Baszler. <laughs> Yo, I suck at pronunciation. Okay, I, I be calling Mario. I'll be calling him, y'all wanna know what I'll be calling Mario. <laughs> what was it? Mario, or Mario, or I'll be calling Mario, Mario. Like instead of like Super Mario, I say Super Mario, and I'll be getting a lot of people angry. Okay, Super Mario. Right, I'm gonna go with that, um, the chic, the, the chic, the chic, um, you know, the half shaven hair, you know. Shayna Baszler. That's, <laughs> I can't, I can't go if I can't, I can't really define it. It's Shayna Baszler. I'm going to show her all the hairstyles, all the hair colors, you know. Shayna, Shayna Baszler with the with the hair. That's actually, I actually like this hair. It's actually looks anytime, anywhere. Let's rock. Run it a bypass. Let's rock. Let's rock. We got incoming. Let's rock. Notch up another kill. Anytime, anywhere. Anytime, anywhere. Shanna Basler. Let's go. <clears throat> My parents were scientists. They taught me biology is war. To win, a species must endure, reproduce, survive. The foes we're about to face evolved to win at all costs. They don't care about their losses, so long as they're the last ones standing. They're as cunning, adaptable, and tenacious as any Marine. But they lack our purpose, our conscience, and our mercy. 40th Marine Expeditionary Unit. This fight is not a simple bug hunt. Know our enemy. Know your strengths. Work together and live to fight another day. Colonel Ship, signing off. Okay. Very Gears of War like. Got the third person shooter action. Very Gears of War Z. Um, a lot of things I can't use yet. My health is full. Oh, what the heck? Uh, I'm just pressing buttons. That's a grenade. Oh. 
Okay, I guess they don't care if I'm throwing grenades. Um, that's my sidearm. Oh, you know, that's not a sidearm. That, that's a shotgun. Oh, you hold the triangle button and use a sidearm. Okay, so this is your rifle. And it's your shotgun. That has eight bullets. I don't want to use them all, but let's see. And that's your shotgun. All right, all right, all right, we're getting somewhere. Shake the cryo freeze off, Marine. We got woke by a distress call. A Dr. Tim Hanukkah sent a mayday from an orbital refinery. Situation ain't clear, but on the outer rim, there's always a chance of xenomorphs. Board the station, find Hanukkah, and extract them. Staff Sergeant Herrera will be the voice in your ear. She'll guide you, warn you of enemy movements, and provide support. Might want to talk to Herrera before you deploy. Herrera. I like the way he says her name, Herrera. Hey, we didn't get a chance to brief earlier. Short version, while you're on the tip of the spear, I'll be in the dropship with LT Co running Overwatch and eating my abuela's cookies. You listen to what I say, I'll get your ass out in the smallest possible number of pieces. And you can have a cookie. You got any questions? Now's the time. Yeah, what flavor cookies are they? Hell no, I'll be in the platoon tack ops center running shit by remote. Better me than some butter bar come mierda fresh out of OCS, huh? Usually I'm in a dropship on Overwatch. When we ain't got air superiority, I'm dirt sight in an APC. When things have really gone to shit, I'll be in a foxhole brushing dirt off a laptop with one hand and shooting with the other. Point is, I run range sensors and tech support for you. For anything I can't handle, I call Esther. Our battalion synthetic, an android. She's a medical corpsman, science advisor, electronic warfare tech, and MFLC. That's a military and family life counselor. Fancy way to say she listens if you got issues. Okay, so she's um, a medic. A uh, scientific advisor, electronic warfare tech, and a counselor all in one. Talk about a one. Oh, that's an android. Talk about a one woman android. While we're in the freezers for long trips, Esther and Endeavor's mother computer keep the ship running. She doesn't normally deploy, but we get her on the radio to solve problems. Did the penejos at the recruit depot give you any briefing? Or they just kick your ass into cryo and call it a day? The Endeavor's a Tianxin class assault ship, cutting edge of the United America's fleet. Built at Puelches Station, commissioned in 2194. Remember the old Conestoga attack transports from the 70s? Well, we're about three times the size. More self-sufficient, more amenities, bigger guns. You and me both, let's do this. Okay, so I guess the only mission that we can really choose is this one. And this is our loadout. That's what I was wondering. I'm like, okay, so when do we put, select our classes? I guess this is our um, class selection. So we can choose what guns we want to use. There's only one gun that we can pick right now. And I'm guessing CQW stands for close quarter, close quarter weapon. I don't know. So we got the shoddy. Um, we could choose the gun. So we could choose, um, choose, um, American green. That looks like U.S. Army colors. U.S. Army green or just plain, like, just plain wood. I like the U.S. Army green. That looks pretty sick. The cows. So, yeah, we put the stripe on it, I guess. I don't know. We even, we even, um, got an achievement for it. <laughs> we just got achievement. Imagine getting an achievement. I mean, trophy. My bad. Imagine getting an achievement for like setting up your weapon. Anyways, um, so it's our shotgun. It's our rifle. We don't have any cool decals. Oh, we do. Um, I guess it's already the U.S. Army green, huh? I don't know. So we got a. Do we have any like puzzles or nothing? Nothing. Okay. So, emotes, what emotes do we have? If I see some Fortnite stuff, I swear, All right, if I see anything that's Fortnite, I see her do the running man, turning this stream off, I'm turning this game off, it be the shortest stream ever. Okay, pretty innocent stuff. Um, it says new, there's nothing else here. Oh, it just shows the 
I whatever. So abilities kind of getting um modern warfare vibes, Call of Duty vibes. So overclock greatly increases fire rate for you by allies. Also increases your reload speed. Frag grenade. Oh, so this is what we were doing earlier. So we used the um grenade and we used the ability. Stay on target. Dealing damage grants you bonus stacks. Stacks fall off when you stop dealing damage. Thunder perks. So here's our uh, perks that we unlock, I guess, as we play through the game. So this is, this is very RPG-like. It's, it's, it's not like Call of Duty. It's kind of very RPG-like. Kind of reminds me of Borderlands with all of the options you pick. I'm not going to go through all of these, but... It's, 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 it's a whole lot of stuff, so change your outfits, I guess, even though they look exactly the same. I don't know. Um, you can put a helmet on, I guess. I'm gonna leave the helmet off. I like how the helmet is, uh, um, you can even change your appearance to, like, that's actually a neat touch. You can change your appearance at any time. I like that. So let's look at the other weapons. We got Demolisher, which is a smart gun, a machine gun. It looks like um the light machine guns that you see, you know, the light machine gun class from Call of Duty. I'm going to make a lot of Call of Duty references. Micro rockets. Launch three rockets that detonate on impact. Last wave. Unleash a concussion blast around you, damage your enemies, and knocking them back. I might use this class. Clear the room. Activating the ability grants one stack to clear the room. An additional stack for each enemy hit. Each stack increases gun damage and lasts for 15 seconds. When new stacks are gained, previous stacks automatically expire. And these are all the... So what's the technician? Got a hand cannon. I get a magnum. Okay. Sentry turret. The blaze of turret directly in front of you automatically fires the enemies. It can't be picked up and redeployed. Okay, so, um, allies sent in your turret takes 10% less damage. So this is a support class, basically. Plus a device that lodges some to your target and unleash direct electrical shocks in the area, damage your enemies, and reducing their movement speed. All right, so this is a support class, and of course this is the healer class, obviously. So, the play is a trauma station in front of you that heals nearby allies. Increases accuracy and stability by 50%, stamina by 30, and moving speed by 15. For each nearby ally, your ability recharge speed is increased by 15%. Picking up an A kit restores a portion of your energy. And same thing for here. Ally standing near a turret can take 10% less damage. When you stand near a turret, it regenerates 5%. So basically, this is your default class. This is the class that goes, goes in and just... Blows everybody up. This is support. And this is healer. We're, we're just gonna. This, this one looks fun. I, you know. Yeah, like yo, you get yo. She holds the gun weird, I but love you know what? Playing poker with Eltico, she never folds. It's a character flaw. Bring Anyways. me back something nice. And we're just gonna just sort of jump right into it, I guess. Um. So here's the difficulties that we can pick. We can't pick extreme or insane. That's it, man. Game over, man. Game over. <laughs> I like I like how the, they reference that. Unlocks have to clean the full campaign. Let's go in order, actually. So, casual. For those looking for a more relaxed experience, like standard with the following changes. Same thing that you would expect from casual modes in other games. Enemies have less health, deal less damage. Teammates quicker. And teammates are more effective. Provides a good challenge for those familiar with shooters. Enemies are highlighted. Um, you can revive down teammates, and synthetic teammates are effective enough to complete missions. Difficulty intense. The true aliens experience. So I guess we're gonna have to play in intense mode. This is the way it's meant to be played, according to this description. Seasoned survival shooter players should find a challenge here, like standard, with the following changes. Enemies are not highlighted when aiming down sights. This cannot be changed in the gameplay settings. Your guns deal light damage to teammates. Oh, so friendly fire is enabled. I can only imagine how this is like playing online co-op. <laughs> friendly fire is enabled. Oh, boy. Okay. Enemy melee grapplers are more difficult to escape. 
Xenomorphasis is deadlier, enemies deal more damage, they have more health, there's less time to revive down teammates, and each player can only be revived three times. Ooh. Okay, max ammo is reduced, and synthetic teammates are not recommended. So, I can't lie to you about your chances, but you have my sympathies. I like how the extreme and the insane difficulties have quotes. I'm assuming from the movies. I've never seen, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the movies, but I, I like... I like that. Your guns deal moderate damage to teammates. Acid and and acid deals severe damage. Okay, so basically the same thing as before. It's just that your guns deal full damage to teammates. I will never. I'll try intense mode. I'll try intense mode. But it says recommended combat rate in 500. So maybe that's not the best thing to do. Because our combat rate is 155. This is 150. The challenge card enables the user challenge cards in the queued mission. And... Matchmaking mode public. Um, uh, uh, yeah, we're gonna be playing online with people. <laughs> we might be playing online with people. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Fire team, this is a rescue mission. You're boarding Katanga, a derelict orbital refinery. Ingress is via the forward airlock. You'll locate, secure, and evac Dr. Tim Honecker, a Weyland Yutani scientist. So mount up, people. Oh, we're actually playing with people. <laughs> oh, boy. Short party, prep for EVA oh, access. Oh, boy. All right, time to see what this is like. This is this is a um this is a first since I started doing this anyway. Actually playing multiplayer with people. Imagine that. <laughs> All right, let's see how bad we do. <laughs> oh, buddy, I just run in and just start shooting everything. Screw it. <laughs> oh, buddy, this was an this was an unexpected turn of events. We're actually <laughs> matched with online players. Oh, buddy. I was going to just go by myself and play, but... Man. Hopefully no one starts trash talking and starts saying explicitives. Nah, I don't... Oh, boy. I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that. All right. Let's go. We got a ping on Dr. Honecker's personal data transmitter. Right, let's go. He's let's go. Far in. Let's move it. First, we need a deck plan. Pull one off a terminal and chlorine extraction. Let's move it. I have no idea what to do, so y'all gonna have to carry me. Huh. Just emergency lights. And maybe we can kick the backup power after we grab Honecker. Patch into the console. I'll pull it down over wireless. All right. Give me a second. I got a deck plan. Backup generator is beyond Honecker's ping. We can kick it after we grab him. Our man should be in the junction ahead. Honecker, this is the Colonial Marines. You hearing me? Acid damage. Not encouraging. Continue your sweep. Ambushed rear. 
watch the ceilings. I didn't expect so many. Hey, on the deck, Hanukkah's PDT chip. He cut it out. But why? Doors welded shut. Sloppy work. Guess Hanukkah went this way. I'll cut it. <laughs> idea how to track down Honecker. Searching this whole barge would take too long. Movement. Tell you my idea later. Probably. Release the locks. Anyway, I'm thinking we can track the doctor using station locks. Grabbing ammo. I found a data access point, but it's further in. Concentrate on getting the power up. Never seen so much acid in one bug. Where did these come from? Just ahead. Restart's mostly automated. Catching up. Aha, eight kids here. Grabbing ammo. Catching Spinning up. this up is gonna make noise, vibration, heat, whatever bugs key off, they'll catch it. This thing's been idle a long while. It's gonna take time to 
Movement. Sentry to pull. Engineering team to get that mess fixed proper. Keep heading aft toward the core.
data access I mentioned is just ahead. We'll see if Honaker's left any tracks. I got Esther standing by to analyze the logs. She's our battalion synthetic. Hello, Marines. It is a pleasure to work with you. Thank you. I will be a moment. Got it. While S runs through the logs, you keep heading aft. Deck 41 was accessed, I believe by Dr. Honecker. Marines, head to the core lift. Big freight elevator goes all the way up the main tower. Hey, uh, when we reach Honecker, how many pieces do you think he'll be in? I got a pool running.
actually paid for safety rails. Got some big internal leaks. Never a good sign in space. Patching up. Hey, kids here. Oh shit, yo. Just pulled up on me. Yeah, that was Same a deal as the generator. Expect little friends to pop out all over when this turns on. What are you at? Elevator oh. 17 okay. decks up. Take a walk nearly there. You still good, Marines? Uh -huh. Set up a perimeter, then hit the call button. All my boards just lit up. Brace for it, Marines. Sentry to pull. Sentry to pull. Oh, 
Damn. This is me. Okay, maybe it wasn't. A, maybe it was a good idea that I didn't play insane mode. Wait, we didn't play insane mode, right? I don't think it was insane. I think it was standard mode. Oh, I had something I wanted to tell you. Yeah, damn right you're ready for another mission. I think it was standard mode. Yeah, it was standard mode. That's kind of rough. Alright, so you can't just go one man army and everything. Like, you have to actually rely on your teammates, but unfortunately. I don't know. That other guy was just kind of weird because it was like. He was dead. He could have went to the elevator and got revived. I feel like all we had to do was go into the elevator as a group, but. I don't know. Dude didn't want to go into the elevator for some reason. Um. And. Dang, I was hoping, like, you know, I would get one dub to show off, but I guess losing the game shows off what the game is about because, I mean, gotta have teamwork, gotta have coordination, but shame we didn't, um, get to really go in. Damn, we died on the first mission, that's crazy. Anyways. I guess that's how it is in team-based games. The difficulty doesn't really lie in the game itself. It relies on your teammates. And fortunately, the teammates that we were with were just not good enough, I guess. I don't know. But um, first take, first look of the game, it's not really my cup of tea in this regard. I mean, kind of reminds me. It gives me Left 4 Dead 2 vibes for sure. And Left 4 Dead 2 definitely requires a lot of teamwork. And coordination and different classes i feel like we could have done better if we had a medic i feel like if i were to play this game like actually pick this game up i would be shoehorned into a medic role because ain't nobody ain't nobody gonna play that role but someone's gonna have to play the role of a medic i don't know that's just me anyways this was alien fire team aliens fire team elite um, by Cold Iron for a new developer. It's not a bad game, not a bad title. There's some kinks that could be worked in, but it's a solid Aliens experience. It's a solid little co-op game. I, I, I dig it. It's not for me, but I understand where the game is coming from, and I like it in that regard. I like what they were trying to do. It's different from other Alien games. Anyways, that's been the first look, and catch y'all on the next one. Alright, so that was Aliens Fireteam Elite, released on the PS4, the PS5, Xbox Series X, and Xbox One. Please leave a like and subscribe, it'll help us out greatly. Take care and have a good one.